Okay, the next thing we need to do now is just do a zigzag stitch or overlock along the facing edge, along here, all the way up and around here. Just along, just to, to, up to the top, top of this straight edge here on both sides. So let's get on and do that first. Tidy away a little bit. You might just have enough thread to do one side. Take your zipper foot off if you have that on. Don't um, get that mixed up with what you're using at the moment. So let's put this back onto a, a zigzag. And I'm going to use a four depth and the two width that it's on at the moment already. And just holding it out singularly. And we're on the facing, not the side with the pockets, the side without the pockets. Just going to start at the bottom here and just zigzag this edge in. stitch this by adding it in the second one in and I'm going to just snip off those threads okay so that's the two front edges the other thing that you need to do as well is if you see any little whiskers like these little bits just here. Just just snip those off as well, just so that you just neaten up that edge. If you've overlocked, then you will not have any of those anyway. It's just to give you a nice edge, finished edge at the end. Just be careful not to snip through any of your zigzagging stitches because you will, you will then have to go back and redo that bit. If you've not got a zigzag function on your sewing machine, you could also um, just p use your pinking shears just to pink along these edges as well, if you wish to. I have got an overlocker, but I'm presuming that most of you haven't. Um, and so that's why I'm doing a zigzag finish on this for now. Okay, nearly there. So then the next thing that we're going to do then, if I move my sewing machine out of the way, I need to keep an eye on my bobbin because it's coming very low now. Okay, so we're gonna lie this back down on our work surface on our table and we are going to take a pin and we are going to match through the hole of the, the hole, the center of each of those tailor's tacks on the edge just there and just put a pin through and we're going to do that again so we're not turning anything in at the moment we're just matching one on top of the other and just putting a pin through the center of each of those um, tailors tags because what we're going to do now is we're going to sew from here from this edge here where we've zigzagged we're going to go at half a quarter of an inch into the um, or just under quarter of an inch into that point pivot around the back here, pivot, and then back out just to there. Okay, I think I've got enough thread to do that. So we're just under a quarter of an inch. Let's have a look. I need to be on a straight stitch. So if I lock my, my needle position down to 4.5 on a quarter of an inch seam allowance, that should give me the, the amount that we need. So now we're getting close to sew to the centre of that tailor's tack and put your needle down into your work. Lift your presser foot up so you can pivot freely. Make sure the raw edges are at the same point on the back of your um, neck and then we're going to do the same distance all the way around. Just a little bit of a pivot just there, just to make sure that's all just lying nice and flat. And down to the dot. Needle in the work at the dot. Lift your presser foot up again, and then pivot. And then we're going to come off to this side just here. 
this is called stay stitching it's just going to hold that together for us in the right place whilst we're doing the next step so then what we need to do now is be brave so we can take out well not brave taking out our tailor's tags but the next bit after taking out our tailor's tags we need to be brave so let's just unpick those if you get one that's stuck just snip it close to where you are and then you should be able to pull the rest of the edges the other sides out just means it's got caught in the threads and it's been stitched that's it just going to need to knock that bit now while we're here and again just unhook those pink tailor's tax threads because they've served their purpose now they're very useful for markings they're not permanent you're not going to run the risk of them coming back in right the next thing we're going to do now is now you need to locate the point where you pivoted because we need to snip from this inside edge here to that point where you've pivoted we're going to go up to but not through those threads so use this the point of your snips don't put your scissors right the way across because you might might nudge so better to go too little than too far so just take a couple of uh, threads in, we need a little bit more, up to but not through those um, threads and just take it nice and steady. As I say, you don't want to cut through your fabric and then we're going to do the same on the other side as well, up to but not through those threads. Okay, I'm happy with that. The next thing that we're going to do now is we are going to get the back of our garment and we are going to take the pins out, which is our first bit. And put our pattern piece somewhere safe. And then with the right sides together now, so the facing is going to be on the inside of your garment. Let me move this out of the way. Your facing is going to be on the inside of the garment. So what we're going to do first off is where we've got the middle of that fold. I'm just going to put a little snip because that'll just help me. I'm going to just mark a little extra notch. So we're going to turn that round so that the, the back of the garment, the back of the the back piece of the pattern here, which is cut on the fold is going to go against the pocket side okay so if you've, you've, you'll have your facing side up on top and then the other side is on the other side of that and then you're going to put that against your back piece and you're going to put a pin in there just to hold that flat so now I've got this straight so there's the back okay and if we just tip that over you can see the pocket so we know that we've got the right sides of the garment together. It says with right sides together, match and pin the front to the back at the shoulder seam. So this is what we've got here. So let's have a look. So here's the back. So you've got the curve of the neck here, and then that's the shoulder seam there. So, and then on here, we've got the shoulder seam here, which is the edge that goes up to the notch at the that we've just cut. So we're gonna match those up together. And the raw edges go together, which is fine. And then obviously we've got the facing is attached, so you don't have to do anything with that. You're just going to lie that just in place. Oh, I see what's happening. Now, when you do this, you're going to pin it so that you've not, so that the, the point, if you like, or the pivot point that we've snipped to sits on top of the tailor's tack that we've put into the back. I hope this is going to make sense to you. And you're going to put a pin in right on that edge. I think it could be easier when I've pinned it and I'll show you then. Because it'll make a bit more sense, I think. So here we've got a little point there which is single fabric. Because we're stretching out See if I can, so this one's wrong, so let me unpin that one because that one's wrong, I know it is. 
So your natural tendency is going to be to pin um, this cut edge here. Where's my awl? So the cut edge here, can you see, if I hold that together, look, that's where we've snipped into the edge. And what you're doing is you're opening that out to make this a V shape here. And what we need to do is we need to match the starting point. So they go back to the edge here, the starting point, which is the sort of like the outside edge, if you like, of the piece. Match that first and put a pin in because we know that that's right. Then you're going to look at where your tailor's tack is and the point of this V just here that we're taking out needs to finish on, the, on that tailor's tack. So it doesn't go all the way up to the edge of that piece of fabric there behind the tailor's tack. And if we've got that right, that should just sit just on top of there. And because it's a bias edge, I think I've stretched it out with trying to pull it to the right place before. So with a bit of luck, those fibres should all smoosh back in again and sit nicely for me. So I'm just going to use the heat of my hand just to press those flat without getting a pucker in it. I'm going to put a pin in the middle of that. So that's where we are at the moment. So that edge should match th to that point there. Now, then because I've got the centre back matched with the centre fold of the back of the neck, that pretty much sits fairly flat and straight. So let's put another pin in just there. Okay, and what you can see is that we've almost got, so we're going to start here, we're going to sew along here, to just after, just after where that point is. We just need to be careful when we're manipulating this and I'll show you how we do that as we get there. And then we're going to go around the back of the neck and then we're going to find the same position here. We've got a V here where it's sitting on top of the tailor's tack. That needs another pin in just there to hold that still for me. And then we're going to come down the other shoulder seam, which is sitting together nicely on top of itself. So if we look from the back here, you can see the little tailor's tack in the corner there. And that's where that V is formed because we're stretching out that, that point so that when we start to sew, we're going to go around the back of the collar and that's, it will all sit flat once it's sewn. It's a bit like doing the bottom of a... Um, you know, a placket on a shirt, for a men's shirt, sometimes you, you cut through the fabric and, and pull it out so that you can sew it all along. Might not, that last bit might not have made any sense to you, but I know, I know what I'm talking about, I think. <laughs> but that's what we've got. So, shoulder seams are matched together up until the tailor's tack, where the V of the dart is hitting the tailor's tack. But because we've pulled this out, this looks like it's continuous. And when we stitch it, we'll just make sure that we stop and manipulate that fabric. But we'll, we'll, we'll sew most of it this way. Then we'll stop with our needle in the work and then we'll lift up the presser foot and we'll move that bulk of that fabric out of the way and then sew along this next bit. I think it'll all make sense to you. Hopefully I'm labouring the point because hopefully you've already got it. But if not, just rewind the video just so that you can then find out what you need to see. Have I got enough thread? I think so. Let's go for it. Let's have a go. So we're going to start off at this shoulder here, making sure that our raw edges are together, and they are. This is going to this is going to form the top of the shoulder, and we're sewing with a um, quarter of an inch seam allowance on here. Quarter of an inch, half a centimetre, yes, that's right. Oops, too fast, Claire. Right, needle in the work, pin out. I'm gonna take this nice and steady. So for now, I've got my work anchored into the machine at the shoulder point. Now I'm just gonna fold the this bulk of this collar. Can you see where it's curving up? I'm gonna have that flat. 
so that this shoulder seam is kind of sitting flat for me. I think that pin's just slightly in the way just there, isn't it? Let's just move that out of the way. That's better. Right, so the, the ed raw edges of the shoulder seam are in place together. So let's sew that down now. Taking our pins out as we go, but we're going to stop just when we get to that point of that, um, the V of the, of the snip that we cut. One more stitch. Right, leave your needle in your work, lift up your presser foot. And now this bit of bulk here, fold it the other way over and just move your fabric round so you can start to move around this next bit. And it should, she says, it should lie flat for you. And you should be able to start and sew again with your quarter, still with your half an inch, half a centimetre, quarter of an inch seam allowance. And we're just navigating around the back of the neck. Just make sure everything's sitting nice and flat for you. Okay, and before we get to this next one, this is folded under for me. There we go. We're going to make sure that the bulk of the fabric is sitting towards us to start off with. Okay. Use my awl as well just to make sure everything's in place. And we're going to sew it just, we're just sewing just the other side. So the, the piping side of the stay stitching that we did before. Because that's what's going to kind of anchor it down. I've needled my work, lifted up my presser foot, and now I'm going to fold that collar back and away underneath the presser foot. And then when I'm ready, put the presser foot back down again, take the pin out, and then we're going to sew down this other shoulder edge. Just making sure your raw edges all stay together. and see how this is finished off because at the moment it's feeling a little bit messy okay this is what we've ended up with so we've got our collar that's just sort of able to move around but our stitches so this bottom line here is the stitches we're working with have gone all the way to that point there I had it out the way and then I kept my needle in the work and then pressed it down went around the back of the neck did the same here with this one and then down the shoulder. And hopefully we haven't got any pucker marks in there. And when we fold that collar around for the shoulders, it's going to give us this lovely collar that's going to sit nicely around the back, just like magic. There we go. So there's our piped edges. And there's our lovely smoking jacket effect collar. Okay, what do we need to do now? Let's have a look and see. Turn to the right side to check you've sewn beyond the notch and that there are no problems with fin then finish the seam with overlocking or a zigzag. Okay, so we're just making sure that that's all stitching nicely and I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Let's take our tailor's tacks out as well before we go any further. Oh, that one's a bit stuck, but we've got it. Just pull those pink threads out. Because Sarah then wants us to zigzag this now to neaten these this edge. And I would probably be tempted to press those seams open actually at the shoulders. But no, she's not said that, has she? With the right side, it's going to match with the seam. So, yeah, she just wants you to finish the seam with an overlocked edge or a zigzag edge. So, that would be the next thing to do. So, where we've just sewn is we're just going to zigzag along and along there. I think what I might do is just fold that back. And just zigzag on the back of the neck, I think, because then I can then have my shoulder seams open, can't I? Okay, so I'm just going to zigzag between those two notch points there. Just to neaten that off. Okay, that's 
zigzag that off. Again, just I've got a couple of whiskers, just take those off as well, just to neaten that off. Okay, and I'm just going to use my iron and I'm just going to press the shoulder seams open. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to open out our our garment here. We've got the two pockets here, so we can see one, two. Oops, which way? That way. And we've got the back of our garment here. We're going to take a sleeve now. Now remember that the folded edge here is the hem and there's our little notch. The notch for that goes on the top of the shoulder seam, just there. So pop that there and pop a little pin in. And then she says that the bottom of the sleeve should match the other notch. So let's put another pin in there. We're going to sew these on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then we're going to zigzag or overlock these, these seam edges just here to neaten that. I don't think you have to sew all the way down. No, she hasn't. She's just zigzagged the see sleeve seams. Let's do the other one. Open out your garment for the front and the back. Got a few threads loose. Let's just turn those off. So right sides together, locate your notch. Your notch goes on your top of your shoulder. And to pin that in place. And then the edge of the sleeve, the bottom edge of the sleeve, matches up with the other notch. So pop a pin just there to hold that steady. And the other one goes on the other side. And pin that in place. Okay, so I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew these both sleeves on first and then I'm going to zigzag and then we're going to press the seam allowance in towards the sleeve. So I'll do that first, but I've got to just fill up my bobbin so I'll come back to you when we've just sewn this together. Okay, so I've just done that. I've just sewn the sleeves in and I've just pressed the seam allowance towards the sleeves on both sides. And now what we're going to do is we are going to fold the sleeves in half and bring those side seams together. So let's just do this now on this side here. The she does say to Sarah does say to take care to bring the piping together at the same point, but that's quite oh no, I can do that. So you can just fold your sleeves back, look, and just make sure your piping's on top of each other. And because we pinned that, um, because we pinned, oh, sorry, it took the cord out of the center of that. You should be able to get that to lie nice and flat. Let's then match the underarm together. Oops, come on. Dressing gown lie flat for me. Okay, so the notches at the underarm should match and should put those together nice and neatly. So let's have a pin just there as well. And you might want to pin halfway along the sleeve, that's up to you. And then we're going to go down to the bottom here and we're going to match up the bottom edge hem. Because those are all our match points, aren't they, that we've got. And then we can then lay the two sides together and make sure that they match. And just put a couple of pins down there just to hold those together. Just ease it in because they should be the same length. starting to come together now isn't it we're nearly at the end so we're going to sew down this is the start of the underarm look where the cuff is I'm going to start there reverse stitch down to here down to the underarm stitching line pivot and then down all the way down to the hem then I'm going to do that on both sides so let's do one side together make sure you can see I think you can so a quarter of an inch seam allowance on this again take this off zigzag Sometimes I forget, as well you know. So let's just do, and let's reverse as well as start the stitch at the top there, so it goes. So it just finishes, holds that nice and tight, and then quarter of an inch. Just take your time over your piping. You can always use your awl if you need to, just to help you navigate that. It's going to get a bit closer, I think, to that pin first before I take it out. Needling my work. 
to hold that down. I'm just making sure that's lying straight. It feels a little weird underneath, but I can feel with my fingers that it's straight. So let's carry straight across to get to the stitching line that we had before, before we then pivot and come down. So make sure those raw edges are together. Take your pins out as you go. those raw edges up. I'm just going to reverse at the end. We need to take our work out and just trim our threads. And the next thing that you need to do is you need to identify here where the pivot point is again on, at the underarm point here and we're just going to do a snip from this edge here into that point there but not through our stitches just going through the seam allowances oh, just put some pressure on because it's quite thick and that will then enable that i'm just going to take off some of this seam allowance because we don't need all of that there do we just be careful when you're trimming things back that you know what you're trimming back so that's what we need to do the last thing that we will do i'll do the other side as well but then if we turn this round out to the correct side Pull it L out to the right side. You can see that that now will sit nicely. The last thing that I would suggest you do is open up these seam allowances here. In fact, I might well just trim those off at an angle first so that you can't see those. And then I just put a couple of little stitches just by putting my, my needle, move my needle across to the 0.5 position so that it's I've only got a little bit to go inside here. Fold your sleeve back. So we're going to, so there's our sleeve look. I've trimmed off the edges of the seam allowance so they're not going to stick out. Can you see how they're just cut at an angle? And then that's the bit that I'm putting underneath the presser foot, holding it flat. I'm just going to just do a few stitches. Forward and back. And I think that just holds down. I mean, you don't have to do that. This is just a voluntary thing. But I think that holds those seam allowances down. And you don't really notice those extra stitches, especially if your, fab if your thread's a good match. So I'm just going to go and do the same with the other. I might need to just snip that a little bit more. Just not quite lying flat enough. Just take your time, don't go through your stitches. You'll then have to do a little bit, you have to do some mending. Yeah, that's better, that's how lying better. And then I'm going to press these seams to the, oh, we've got to, we've got to neaten these seams first. We're just gonna zigzag this seam first. Um, and then we're going to then, gonna press it once it's neatened towards the back of the garment. So let me just do the other side seam and then I'll come back to you and we'll get some get some finishing off done. Nearly there. Okay, so we're getting close to the end of finishing the actual garment itself. We're now on to finishing the hem. Then we've just got the tie belt to do and I'll show you how to do the little thread loops as well to be able to um, feed the tie belt through, but we need the tie belt finished first. But Next stage, let's get on with doing the um, bottom of the hem. I'm just going to take off that little bit of piping. Now, that is the only bit of piping we've had spare. So, just to warn you, it's really tight, okay? Um, probably save this bit for the for the very intro in, in order to let people know first because that, I think that's really... That's really tight on the length of the piping. But anyway, I'll keep that to one side somewhere safe. Right, so to do the um, hems here, what we're actually going to do is we are going to fold these facings back on themselves first. So you're going to open out your facing and you're going to pin it back to the start of your jacket. Now I've got a little bit of a difference in the hem length of mine, I think, on this side only. 
but we're just going to pin that back and then put a pin in to hold that in place. We're going to do the same on the other side here as well. We're going to pin that in, open that out and pin that into place here. So that gutches to there. So if you look from the top of your fabric, we've opened up these front facings so that they stay, stay in place here. And we're going to sew across those using our one and a half centimetre seam allowance. That's bigger than we normally use. So from here, one and a half centimetres, just across, just holding on to these facing bits here. Okay, so let's just do that. So just do this, sew this edge here. Um, I want that needle position to be in the right place. So look for the markings on the bed of your sewing machine for your one and a half centimetres and you can follow that. I'm going to reverse at the start and stop. Take your pins out, but make sure you put your needle in your work to anchor it. And stop at the edge of that front facing. Just cut your threads off. Now, if you can remember what we did before, didn't we, at the edge of these, we're just going to undo these stitches here and just trim down the edge of that piping because, again, that piping edge is going to be too thick for being in that seam. So you might be able to just grab hold of it and just pull it a little bit stuck in the seam anyway but we can snip off most of that just so that it's going back to there it'll just make that corner fold back so much nicer if you don't have that extra in that seam might be able to just take off a little bit more as well sorry was I off camera I do apologize Sometimes I get carried away with what I'm doing and forget to look up and make sure that you can see. And the whole point of making the video is so that you can see. Okay, just a little bit more to, to, to get. It's been sewn down through that because we've gone through it in the hem, so you can't pull it out very much. But any little bit you can get off without cutting through your binding, the actual thing will be good. So let's do the same again this side here one and a half centimetres and then we're going to do exactly the same thing again and then I will come back to you and show you what we do next. Okay so I've trimmed out the um, excess from there and what we're going to do now is we're going to trim off the corner of this fabric here and the corner here which is so it's just the bottom of the edge where the piping edge is just to reduce that bulk in that corner. Take those bits off the machine, don't want those in there. And then what I've done is I've just trimmed off the edge of the facing just to make that slightly shorter. Again, it's just reducing bulk in these edges here just to make that easier. Because what we're going to do then is we're actually going to, this is going to be turned round so that they turn those back out and through. And obviously we've reduced the bulk there. We're going to press that flat so that we've got a nice hem across the bottom. But then we're also going to turn in a little bit here. Now, in the um, instructions, Sarah says to overlock or zigzag that edge just to um, before you then stitch it down. But I think it'd be neater actually if we just um, turn it over slightly. So I'm just turning it over just probably a couple of eighths of an inch. It's not even a quarter of an inch, um, but that will just give that nice finish. I'm going to put the seam allowances to the back. So they're all nice and lying neat and just make that nice and even across the back there. So that really that's about all we've got to do just to finish this, um, the actual main part of the dressing gown. So let's just get this pressed then. Um, so I'll press it up first between the two points there at the bottom of the facing and then I'll just turn under a little bit there and press that down. It's going to be visible because the little prick marks will be visible because it's... Um, 
it's fairly fine fabric so there's nowhere to hide with it um, but it'll be given need to finish so I'll do that okay so let me just get this pressed and then we'll come back to I'll do a little bit of the hand stitching just to stitch that down um, and then we'll be ready to go with the next bit which will be making the tie belt okay so here's our dressing gown now all nicely hemmed uh, picking threads off it but then we'll be doing that for a little while yet um, just folded over that hem at the bottom as I said and tucked that under and then I've just done a little neat hand stitch on there which is almost invisible from the other side as well so I'm quite happy with that just a slip stitch to slip that closed. I've given it a little bit of a press too, the collar's folding over nicely, it's looking quite nice and luxurious um, and so now what we need to do is we need to work on the tie belt so that's the only pattern piece we've got left which is this, this long thin one what I'm going to do is take out the pins of the pattern and put the pattern piece somewhere safe. Oops, get all these pins out. And this is cut on the fold so it's twice as long as it was. So with this one all we're going to do now is open it out. We are going to put the right sides together so we're just going to fold it in half so the right sides are together. And then you can choose, you can either do um, stitching across the corner here if you wanted to, or you can follow the line of the belt um, as Sarah has done before. But we're going to just put this on top of each other. Get it tonight nice and flat. And then we're going to use our red pin trick to tell us when to stop, because we're going to stop around about the middle because we want to leave a turning gap in there. So let's just go to the other end and finish that off. And I thought the turning gap can be around about where the, the middle of the tie will be because we don't want it to, to be on a place where it's on one of the on the drop bits at the front. We won't need to leave much. Let's have a red pin here and put it that way and that'll tell us to stop. And we'll have another red pin here about an inch along and we'll tell that when we want to start again. So between the red pins is where we're going to stop and start. The rest of it is just pinned together in order that we can sew it. And we're going to sew across here, start and stop here. Across, we're going to leave our, leave our needle in our work and pivot here. And then sew all the way to the red one and just reverse stitch there. And then join our fabric back here, reverse stitch, and then do the other side. So let's get our machine ready. And we're just using, I think it's a half a centimetre seam allowance. Yes, it is. So it's just a just a narrow quarter of an inch seam allowance on here. I'm on, all set up, ready to go. Find my pedal. Just reverse there. Um, needle in the work and twist. Just make sure you're happy with your seam allowance before you get started again. Just make sure you right, your edges are together. Sewing down towards that red pin. Just reverse stitch there. Needle up. We can just jump across the gap. Put our needle back down. Move our pin out of the way. We don't sew over pins if we can help it. Reverse. Needle in the work so we can carry on. Make sure you've got your raw edges together. maybe but never mind oh no it's just right and then across and reverse at the end there needle out and trim our threads off and where we've got that little jump of threads in the middle there we'll just snip those off as well just to make that easy to turn and our starting threads wherever they are okay they're here and so all we need to do then is just turn this round. We can use a knitting needle or you can use a um, turning tool if you've got one. Let me see what I've got to hand. Hold on one second. Okay, so I've just got a pen here. I'll just push that up inside and that might, if you just give it a bit of a wriggle, and quite often it'll come through. You need to do it with a blunt end because you don't want to go and pierce through your fabric. I don't 
something. You don't want to pop your stitches either. If that won't work, you can use a pin. And just very gently just pull through on here. If you've got a turning tool, that'll work well. I just can't reach my knitting needles at the moment, but a knitting needle would work really well too. Just be careful if you're using a pin that you don't pull out your stitches or mark the dressing gown tie, because that would be a shame. And yes, I know I should stop the video and go and get my knitting needle, but if I, if I try and get out now, you can't see how hemmed I am. In I am to my place and my chair. <laughs> I'll be glad when my husband's done the um, units that he's going to build me for this room so that we can have a bit more space. Right, I'm going to just delay this, stop this video for a minute while I just turn this round. You know what I'm doing anyway, just to turn this round. So turn both sides around to the right way and then we're going to press it so that the um, belt's at its full width. And then I'll come back to you. I'm hoping I've caught you in time. I've done one, but I've not done the other. Don't forget to snip off just the corners of your tie, just not, not quite up to the um, stitches and that will help reduce the bulk when you turn it through. I've forgotten to do it on one side, but I've remembered on the other. Um, so hopefully I've caught you in time. Okay, so I've got this all turned out now. So now the best thing you can do is just kind of finger press it. You just want to be see, um, trying to find your seam edge so that you're getting the same width all the way along. Because if you press it flat before you've actually pulled out these stitches, then you're going to lose some of your width. So you want that just to be right on the edge there. And you can sometimes just roll it between your fingers and then just iron it just quickly or just finger press it really, I suppose. Um, just put some pressure on and that should keep it quite straight for you. When you get to the gap that we've already um, sewn, you're just going to turn that in the same amount as the seam allowance. But I would go to the other side first and finger press this because I think that's going to then be easier for you to find the start and the stop point of that. So just make sure your stitches are right at the edges. Just takes a little bit of fabric manipulation just to just to get that right, just to the edge. And you just kind of find, try and push it open while you can onto the seam line. And then you can move that line up to the top and then just run your fingernails across it and it'll just make that go up to the top for you. A little bit fiddly, but it's, 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 it's not that fiddly. I'm, I'm making it look fiddlier than it is, I think. Okay. And then we're gonna tuck that. So now you can see those, we've got the two ends there. So now we can tuck those two bits in because we're going to top stitch this um, dressing gown tie. And so we want to be able to seal those two bits in there at the same time. So that's pretty much got that. So what I'll do next, just take this over to my ironing mat, switch my iron on. Move that pin out of the way. And then just using this little ironing mat to just press this down in place. Can't see, can you? Let me find out where you can see over here. And that should now press pretty flat for you. Just do any little manipulation you need just so that you've got that sewn edge right on the edge of what you're doing. It's there, has moved slightly. So you can just move it in your fingers and just repress it, that's it. Go down to this side here now. Make sure that's pretty right. Just using a little bit of steam on this just to hold it in place. And then you can see we've already finger pressed that and it's holding in, in place just nicely. So just put a little bit of tension on either side as you press and that should just pull those edges in for you nice and neat. And as I say, when we top stitch this, you shouldn't be able to see. Well, you can see a little bit there, can't you, where it's just gone off? You shouldn't be able to see when we've top stitched it where that gap is. Just move that across slightly. As I say, it just likes to twist slightly on you as you're, as you're putting it together. But that's why we put this at the back of the waist so that it's not so noticeable. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do now is go back to the ironing um, sewing machine. I've got a little whisker there, let me just take that little whisker off. And then we're just going to sew from here. You can, I probably wouldn't do it on the edge. I would probably start somewhere near the back here or maybe just where a part where it's going to go round the back um, and just start and stop. And we'll do that invisible start and stop that we've done before. Um, I'll show you how to do that. So, so don't back tack, just start stitching and just start stitching here. Go all the way along about an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch in from the edge just to catch that and just go around all four sides and go back to where you started. But leave long tails, but don't back stitch. And I'll show you why we're not back stitching when we get to the end bit. And we'll do that invisible finish that we've done before. Just try and get your stitches to match up at this meeting point where you start and stop as much as possible. And if you get chance, maybe do it on top of a motif as well so that'll be less noticeable as well so we'll, we'll have a go at that and see how that works let me just move this iron out of the way squeaky chair again it's nothing to do with the weight on it honest <laughs> and then what we're going to do is just use our machine here i'm going to move my needle across because i do like to let's have a think where we're going to have it so i'm going to move my needle across to the right this time and I'm going to go, mine goes as far as seven and I'm on a 6.5, so that should be enough. And I said start in a motif, didn't I? So I should, ought to follow my own advice really. Let's start just here. Okay, and I'm just going to do a little stitch all the way down, following the marks on my presser foot to keep my stitches nice and neat. Down to the corner, needle in your work before you then twist. Have your all ready because sometimes when we've got these little bits they don't want to just go through and you can just help it just go through. Do one more stitch. And I probably will need my all just to help this through. Ah, it's gone. That's it. If you're just trying to get it just right on that edge. Threads out the way. And then we're going to go back down now to where we started. Closes up the um, edge that we had there that was open. Time with it. Right, one more. And I'll take that out. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'll show you in a second. Let me just cut the thread and leave you long threads. So what we've got, we've not reverse sewn on here at all. We've just got our four threads there that are all finished, and we've got our nice edging. All the way along there and where we'd got that bit that where it was joined together in the middle you now can't tell where it is because it's just been sealed in as part of the whole um, sewing so that's all fine pop my specs on because I'm going to need those and we get our needle and what we're going to do is first of all we're going to pull the threads through and to, to, to one side so at the moment we've got our um, bobbin threads on one side and the top threads on the other but if you just give one one of your stitches a little pull you'll see a little loop that just starts to form just here and we give that a pull and then what we can do is we can knot those threads together so we pull the bobbin thread through to the top if it won't come through because you've sewn over it just use your needle thread your needle with the bobbin thread and then just pull it through onto the top and then what we do then, tie your two knots, get snip these off so they're the same length. Excuse the cut on my finger, I'm trying not to show you that. Had an incident with a bread knife, which isn't to be recommended when you're trying to film things. And then what we do then is we've got the knot in the thread there, and we're going to write in just by the side of where that knotted thread is. We're now going to put the needle and slide it through the channel very carefully 
just along about an inch or so through the channel. So if you can see that, so I've got the, here's the needle and it's just, it's not through the other side at all. It's just going through that channel of fabric. And then when you pull it and give it a little tug, it pulls those knots through. And then if you put a little pressure on this, these threads as well, when you snip those, they disappear back in. So now we've got an invisible join on our threads at the moment. So let's do that again. So we're going to pull the threads through to the top, just put pressure on the top thread and you should see a little loop that comes. Not that one, but that one just there. So let's pull that through. We then knot these threads together. I'm just doing two. Because there's no pressure on this, is it? It's just a, it's just tying it together. So that's got those two together. And then we cut the threads off so that they're the same length, so it makes it easier for threading. And thread our needle. And then we again are going to thread right in by the where the knot was, right on that stitching line, and then going to go through the channel that has been made by the seam allowance folding over. It'll make sense when you're making yours. And I use this a lot when I'm finishing off things just because it just gives a really lovely, there's no revert, messy reverse stitching on it. Just pull it through, give it a little tug and you'll feel the knot go through inside. And then put some pressure on your threads as you snip those off. And then if we look just there, actually that's where the join is, just there. But there's nothing you can see that would let you believe that that's actually where the threads have. Maybe just one stitch slightly missing. Hopefully you can see that. Lovely, lovely and neat. Okay, so that's our tie belt finished. The next thing we're going to do is what Sarah suggests, and of course she knows us all very well, doesn't she? And we're gonna make some belt loops, some thread belt loops for our dressing gown to hold the tie in place like we would have on an ordinary dressing gown. Now she suggested six to seven centimeters below the arm underarm seam. So let's put our pins in to mark that first. Let's put my seam gauge here. I've got tangled up with threads. So, oh gosh, that's low, isn't it? Six to seven. Six to seven below the underarm intersection. Hold on a second, let me just go and get a Luna to try this on. Just got a Luna here because that felt like it was going to be quite low. So let's pop her arms in and through in the new dressing gown. It's very glamorous, isn't it? It's a bit like one of those smoking jackets, isn't it? But I've seen these made in lovely floral fabrics as well and they're really sweet. Okay, let's have a look, Luna, at where your waist is because I think it was suggested a bit low. So let's have a look and I'll tell you what measurement I think you need. Probably round about there. Let's just tie that. even a little bit low now let's just do that okay one just there and one just here so it's above the pockets obviously you can have wherever you like but I'm just I've just marked either side of the belt just there on Luna and that's where I like it on her so let's take this off for now thank you Luna for your services okay so what we're going to do now is let's have a look at this measurement and see where they are so the first one is three centimetres below the top from the underarm point here, three centimetres. Move that slider so you can see. And then the gap is actually two centimetres. So we've got one at three and one at five. So let's put the other pins in the other side. So find your underarm seam where it all joins. Let's have a pin at three. just there and then I want another pin and let's have that just further down on that same side and two okay so we've got our 
belt loop position marked up. Now, this is where you can choose your thread. You can either use the thre same thread you've been using for sewing your garment together. You could use the red thread if you wanted to as well. It's up to you. Um, I'm going to use this mustard one because I think most of you will probably have the same th sewing thread spare. And you need a long piece Okay, even though we're just doing a little bit belt loop because we're going to quadruple it. So we're going to fold it in half first and thread our needle. Where have I put my needle? Here. And this is how we're going to make our belt loop. So we're going to have it quadrupled. You need quite a long piece. That might even not be long enough, Beb. So this is probably about a metre long. Okay, so it's into, into two. And then we're going to do a quilter's knot with the end one, two. I think it should be enough. And just pull that through. That gives us a nice firm knot at the end. And I'm going to put the edges off nice and short. And then what I'm going to do is... Okay, so if you've not done one of these before, that's a really useful thing to know how to do. We're going to hide the, loop, the, um, the knot behind the seam allowance so I'm going inside the jacket and I'm going through here into the round to the front of the um on the right on the seam but it hides the knot in the back so we've not got a knot on display we can take that pin out now because we know where we're going oops what is that? and then what we're going to do then is lie the the the, the um thread fairly straight and we're going to take one stitch just at the back, just here where that other marker is. And once we've done that, we can take that pin out because that's got our two centimetres marked for us. You don't want it too tight, but you don't want it too loose either because we're going to do some stitches. And then what I do is then come back up to here and do another stitch here. So we've actually got, and keep those threads nice and neat. Mine have all just bunched up, look, as you can see, but just pull them through and keep them nice and neat. Right, this is where the magic happens. So what you're going to do is just lift up those, those loops with your finger. See, let me just show you first. Right, they're, they're lying all nice and flat, can you see? So that's my, with my needle attached, and that's my threads there that I've got on my, on my work. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to take the needle, we're going to make a loop around the back, and then we're going to come through as if we're making like a little knot and then we're going to pull it tight. And it just puts a little knot on there. And then again, take the, the, fab, the thread all the way around the back, and then you're going to come up through the loop, and you're going to do another little knot and pull it tight. And you're going to keep doing this all the way along the edge of that thing. If it just pull them together, if they just start to drift apart a bit. And this is why I say we need to have that long thread I'll show you in a second. Can you see that little little braided edge just forming just on the edge there, look? Hopefully you can see that. Switch off the light off there. Maybe that's what's making it too bright. I don't know. Right, So, but we just keep on doing that. So thread around the back and then you're going to use the, ne the, the point of your needle just to come under. And we're just coming underneath the threads. We're not taking any fabric with it. Just make sure your, thread, your knots aren't going over the top of each other. You need to go down and then you can just pull it together. Perhaps that's better with my fingernail underneath. So you, oops, now you see I've made a mess. Hold on a second. Just straighten all of this out. I was too busy talking. But it's a good thing because we can look how to save this. So yeah, let's just undo that one. Smooth all our threads down. Okay, let's start again. So underneath the needle there, and then pull that tight, and then just pull it, cinch it along. And round, and just cinch it along. And we're gonna go all the way along this loop. That's why I say it needs to be a little bit loose, but not, and not too tight, because it sort of thickens up as it's going down. It wants to twist on you a little bit, but it's up to you whether you let it or not. 
needle underneath and then you can just pull it onto each other and can you see that's just forming because we've got a little bit of a twist going on maybe if I put that under there if I pull it round properly it just wants to twist slightly that's all okay so let's just do another one oops threads round under with the th point of the needle but not through the fabric and then keep those threads nice and tight got one that's not tight there not following my own instructions that's it got it We go all the way along to the end, making sure that we're going through that loop all the time. I say it's wanting to twist on us slightly. Just hold it out of the way with your finger if you need to. Oops. Yeah, I think we've got enough thread. That's good. So there we go. Nearly there. You can do this on adults' clothing as well. Um, you know, if you're doing little um, lingerie straps or if you are attaching a lining to a skirt, you've got a lining that keeps riding up on a skirt, you can put some of these at the, along the hemline, um, not along the hemline, along the side seams to attach the lining to the skirt as well. And they do just make some nice little decorative bits on there. So keep coming down to the end. So there we've got our little belt loop. Probably a couple more. That's one. Because you want them to be quite tight because you're trying to hide those original kind of threads that we had. Make sure that one comes down. Okay, so that's what it looks like when it's done. And then what you're going to do then is take your needle back in your work and you're going to come out back underneath the seam allowance just because the seam allowance is pressed back so just come back along towards where the the side that the knot was on so you've got a nice neat um, loop there with no thread showing and then you're just going to do a few stitches on your seam allowance underneath just to finish that off and just to tie that in do it quite tight because you don't want them because they could get quite a lot of pulling couldn't they and then when you're happy you can just run your needle down inside the seam allowance like we did the secret of visible finishing before if you can get it to go down oh, got the front of the jacket there dressing gown no it's not wanting to do play ball that time probably a bit tight together with the zigzagging That'll do. Okay, so just pull that down inside there. Make sure you've got all your threads all nice and neat in. Just pull them individually if they won't um, won't go in straight because there'll be one that's just folded back slightly. That's the one. Okay, and then we just snip off there. So let me just show you. That's our belt loop there. And then our belt is going to thread through the loop and be held onto it nice and flat against there. It has twisted slightly, they, they do. It doesn't bother me that it's twisted, it might bother you. Um, you can just lay it flat as you can do in order just to make that nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna go off and do the second one now on the other side, and then we'll just do a round up. And so this is our finished um, dressing gown. Luna's sporting it here very nicely. We've got the shawl collar, all the piping all neatly done, our lovely tie belt with our thread loops on the back there and a lovely eye uh, hand stitch the back of this seam just here. 
just the hem just to make it lie nice and neatly. So once again, I want to thank Lynn Harris, who is one of our subscribers for her sponsorship for the dressing gown. I hope this has helped Lynn. If not, give me a shout. If you're interested in having some more help with your sewing at all, and that can be with adult or children's sewing, with quilting or with home decor, then please consider joining my Facebook group. Um, it's a it's Sewing by Claire sewing support group, and we've got a lovely community of people there um just who just have a love of stitching and there we can swap pictures of our makes and we can talk about things and we'll have chat rooms and sewing surgeries and all that kind of thing to help so if you think that might be of interest to you then pop along to facebook and the name is um, sewing by claire sewing support group hopefully you can find that if you're struggling to find the group on Facebook, then have a look on YouTube um, on my channel page because on there, and I don't know if it's available on the, it might have to be on a tablet or on a laptop, I'm not sure, but there's either, um, there's a, on the picture, there's a link to the Facebook group there, or if you go onto the about page for my channel, which you should be able to access, then there's a link to it as well there. If not, give me a shout through Instagram or through um what else can you use well instagram really i suppose or by email i think my email address on the about page as well and i'll see if i can get that a link across to you so i hope you've enjoyed this i hope you've enjoyed sewing along i hope i've given you some lovely tips of how to do your your dressing gown for your character as well and happy stitching everybody bye <laughs>